Hey, Mike Matthews here, and welcome to another episode of Muscle for Life. Thank you for joining me today. And what do I have in store for you? Well, this episode is one of the chapters of the new second edition of my best selling book for experienced weightlifters, Beyond Bigger, Leaner, Stronger, which is live right now over at www.bblsbook.com. Now in this book, you will learn science-based and time-proven formulas for eating and training that will help you shatter muscle and strength plateaus, set new personal records, and build your best body ever. And better yet, you will do those things without following restrictive or exotic diets, without putting long hours in at the gym, and without having to do crushing workouts that leave you aching from tip to tail. Also, to celebrate this momentous occasion, I'm giving away over $6,000 of glorious goodies, including a 30-minute Zoom call with yours unruly, that's priceless of course, a Vitamix blender, a Whoop fitness tracker, a $200 Lululemon gift card, one month of Legion VIP coaching, and more. Now, all you have to do for a chance to win all those cool things is head over to www.bblsbook.com and buy a copy of BBLS 2.0, any format, ebook, paperback, audiobook, whichever one you want, and then forward the receipt email to launch at legionsupplements.com, L-E-G-I-O-N supplements.com, and voila, you are entered in the giveaway. You have to act fast though, because the book launch bonanza ends and the winners will be chosen on October 16th. Now you can also increase your chances of winning by buying extra copies of the book. Again, any formats and specifically if you buy three copies of the book instead of one, you will get five giveaway entries. So that is a plus 400% chance to win. If you buy five copies, you'll get eight giveaway entries, that is a plus 700% chance to win. And if you buy 10 copies, you are going to get 15 giveaway entries, which is a plus 1400% chance to win. And if you buy 10 copies, you are going to get an autographed copy of the book as well. That you don't have to win, you're just gonna get it. So for instance, if you buy the paperback ebook and audiobook that's three copies you'll get five entries to win and then if you buy three paperbacks as well as the ebook and audiobook that is five copies and you'll get eight entries and so forth and what are you going to do with extra books you're wondering well you could give them to your workout buddies you could donate them to your local library you could hurl them at unpleasant children i don't know there are many options when you think about it anyway to learn more about the giveaway and to get your copy or copies of beyond bigger leaner stronger 2.0 head over to www.bblsbook.com. Chapter nine, nine superfoods for supercharging your body that you'll actually enjoy. Thou should eat to live, not live to eat. Socrates. Imagine if eating a handful of special foods every day could maximize your brain power, metabolism, energy levels, immunity, physical performance, muscle building, libido, skin, hair, and nail health. Keep imagining it because that's as real as it'll ever get. There are no individual foods that can single-handedly transform your health and well-being. Only a lifestyle can do that. One that revolves around eating nutritious foods, exercising, maintaining good sleep hygiene, and balancing stress and relaxation. Food and supplement marketers won't let a pesky fact like that thwart their designs on our paychecks, though. And so we have the superfood phenomenon. You're struggling with acne, you say? You don't need to work out and stop eating all those sugary treats you love. Vapid male celebrity 2343 says eat some avocado, salmon, turmeric, and blueberries, and you'll have Photoshop perfect abs just like his, which are totally not Photoshopped. You want to lose more fat while you're at it? Forget counting calories. Apples, almonds, olive oil, grapefruit, and oatmeal are the ticket, especially if you mix them in this overpriced blender. Feeling down and dull? 
it can't be the hours of social media, YouTube, Netflix, and porn every day. Indulge in some beets, grass-fed beef, eggs, and walnuts, and your mood and IQ will totally soar. I think you get the point. Marketers coined the term superfood to sell stuff, and it has worked remarkably well. Spinach, quinoa, kale, berries, and tea are in their heyday. And while the superfood white lie has encouraged many people to eat somewhat better, it has also confused many about how their body works and how to make it work better. Why is this chapter about superfoods and supercharging your body then? Because while you should be skeptical about the exaggerated claims surrounding specific foods, certain ones added to an otherwise nutritious diet can further improve your health, performance, wellness, and longevity. It would be disingenuous to call them superfoods, but they are a cut above your average healthy fare. And if you're looking to squeeze more high-quality living out of your body, you should eat them. Let's call them functional foods instead, because that sounds more reasonable and accurate. And here they are. Fish, garlic, blueberry, cranberry, oatmeal, cruciferous vegetables, spinach, dark chocolate, black seed. Let's learn about each. Fish. Seafood is a great source of protein, as well as various vitamins and minerals, such as magnesium, phosphorus, selenium, and vitamins A and D. It's also one of the few foods that provides vital omega-3 fatty acids, which are sorely lacking from many people's diets. You can increase your intake of omega-3 fatty acids either with supplementation or by eating more fatty fish. When purchasing fish, your first consideration should be the mercury content. The Natural Resources Defense Council offers the following guidelines for minimizing fish-based mercury in your diet. Low mercury fish, anchovies, butterfish, catfish, clam, crab, domestic, crawfish, crayfish, croaker, Atlantic, flounder, haddock, Atlantic, hake, herring, mackerel, North Atlantic, mullet, oyster, perch, ocean, place, pollock, salmon, canned, salmon, fresh, sardine, scallop, shad, American, shrimp, sole, Pacific, squid, calamari, tilapia, trout, freshwater, whitefish, whiting, moderate mercury fish, bass, striped black, carp, cod, Alaskan, croaker, white Pacific, halibut, Atlantic, halibut, Pacific, jack smelt, silverside, lobster, mahi-mahi, monkfish, perch, freshwater, sablefish, skate, snapper, tuna, canned chunk light, tuna skipjack, weak fish, sea trout, high mercury fish, bluefish, grouper, mackerel, Spanish, gulf, sea bass, Chilean, tuna, canned albacore, tuna, yellowfin, highest mercury fish, mackerel, king, marlin, orange ruffy, shark, swordfish, tilefish, tuna, big eye, ahi. Besides choosing your fish based on mercury content, you'll see different fish being advertised as wild-caught or farm-raised. Though wild-caught sounds like the healthier option, the science is ambiguous. In terms of nutritional profiles and contaminant levels, few significant differences exist between wild-caught and farm-raised fish. Regardless of which fish you choose and how it was caught or raised, keep the following guidelines in mind. Purchase from a reputable supplier. A highly regarded local fish market is likely to offer better quality products than a large chain grocery store. Give the fish the smell test. Fresh, unfrozen fish should smell of seawater or cucumber. Avoid fish that gives off a strong, unpleasant odor. Look for fish with elastic flesh. If possible, press a finger into the fish. The flesh of fresh fish will bounce back. If the indentation remains, the fish is past its prime. Look for liquid on the meat. Milky liquid present on a fish fillet is often a sign of rot. Examine the quality of the skin. 
When purchasing fillets with the skin intact, scales should be smooth and shiny. Ruffled scales or a dull appearance are signs of age. If purchasing fresh fish isn't an option for you, frozen fish, whether bought locally or from an online retailer, may be a viable alternative. Look for frozen at sea FAS designations. These fish are flash frozen as soon as three seconds after being brought on board the ship, giving them a superior flavor and quality over longer processed fish. Watch out for freezer burn. White dehydrated spots or visible ice crystals indicate moisture loss, usually as a result of thawing and refreezing. Look for moisture proof, vapor proof packaging. Fish packaged this way fare better than overwrapped ones. If you're not taking an omega-3 supplement, try to have fish high in omega-3s like salmon or mackerel at least once per week. Garlic. Garlic has a long and illustrious history in traditional medicine for treating everything from blood disorders to infections to aging. It's even thought to be the first dietary performance enhancer. Garlic gets its mojo from its abundance of sulfur, which helps the body produce hydrogen sulfide, H2S. H2S is a gas-like substance that relaxes blood vessels, improving blood flow, and activates a protein that signals cells to absorb and burn energy, known as AMPK. Over time, however, garlic fell out of medicinal use because it's a handyman of sorts that can do many mild things in the body, as opposed to a specialist with fewer significant effects. Modern medicine thrives on specialization and specificity, not generalization, and so prefers treatments that do one thing very well, like metformin for glucose control and warfarin for blood thinning. Garlic's still an outstanding functional food, though, and most studies showing benefits used aged garlic extract at around 600 to 1200 milligrams. This is the equivalent of about one to three garlic cloves per day, depending on their size. Ideally, you'd eat garlic raw as heat destroys the enzyme that helps create the bioactive compounds that give garlic most of its special properties. For instance, research shows 60 seconds in the microwave, 45 minutes in the oven, or 15 minutes in boiling water can eliminate this enzyme. That said, heating garlic doesn't render it worthless, but it relegates it to the level of a more basic antioxidant like blueberry or cranberry, as opposed to a source of uniquely beneficial molecules. If the thought of putting down a clove or three of raw garlic every day turns your stomach, you have another option. Crush, chop, or mince it, and then let it sit at room temperature for at least 10 minutes before cooking. This releases an enzyme in garlic known as allianase that boosts the creation of health-promoting sulfur compounds and helps protect them from being damaged by heat. I incorporate garlic into more or less every dinner I make. Typically, I'll chop it up, let it sit for 10 or 15 minutes while I cook up a stir-fry or veggie casserole, or heat up a soup, chili, or stew, and add the garlic last when the dish is ready. This way, the garlic is mostly raw when I eat it. Crushed garlic is also a tasty topping for oven-baked fish and chicken. Cover it with aluminum foil if it starts to turn brown while cooking because it can taste funky if overcooked. Blueberry. Blueberries, and all dark blue black berries, are a superior fruit because of their anthocyanin content, which is a powerful antioxidant linked to improved memory, mood, and immunity, as well as less DNA damage, which helps protect against various types of disease and dysfunction. The dose required to produce benefits isn't small, but it's still workable. 60 to 120 grams of fresh blueberries, or about one half to one cup per day. The highest doses used in studies are around 250 grams, which would be a chore to eat, but easily turned into a juice. You can also opt for frozen blueberries and aim for about 175 grams per day. 
The process of freeze drying causes minor losses in antioxidant capacity, but this isn't a cause for concern because antioxidant levels rise in berries after they're frozen. If you're buying a pre-made blueberry juice, make sure it's not just blueberry flavored, but made with blueberries. The first ingredient should be blueberry. I typically eat blueberries fresh and raw. They're especially good when mixed with oatmeal and make a nice addition to salads as well. Cranberry. Cranberries have been associated with improved urinary health for years now, and recently high quality evidence has emerged to support this. How cranberry accomplishes this is neat, too. Rather than killing the bacteria that cause urinary tract infections, it prevents them from adhering to the urinary tract. Moreover, results have been seen with as little as 500 milligrams of cranberry fruit powder, which is just dehydrated cranberries stuffed into capsules. In another study conducted at University Hospital, scientists found that a dose of just 1.5 grams of dried cranberries was effective. Even cranberry juice has been shown to work. Like most berries, Cranberries have a high water content, so an effective dose of fresh cranberries would be about 11 grams, a small handful. If you are liking this episode, you should know that it is one of the chapters of the new second edition of my best-selling book for experienced weightlifters, Beyond Bigger, Leaner, Stronger, which is live right now at bblsbook.com. Also, you should know that to celebrate this momentous occasion, I am giving away over six thousand dollars of glorious goodies including a 30-minute zoom call with yours unruly a vitamix blender a whoop fitness tracker a 200 dollars lululemon gift card one month of legion vip coaching an inzer weightlifting belt and much more and all you have to do for a chance to win is head over to bblsbook.com buy a copy of the book any format and forward the receipt email to launch at legion supplements.com and voila you are entered in the giveaway. You have to act fast though, because the book launch bonanza ends and the winners will be chosen on October 16th. Oats. Despite what the paleo folk would have you believe, we humans have been enjoying oats for a very long time. For instance, a 2015 study conducted by scientists at the University of Florence found our ancient ancestors were eating oats 33,000 years ago. There are good reasons this grain has stood the test of time, too. It grows easily in many different environments and stores well, has a mild, pleasant taste that goes well with many other foods, and it's an excellent source of several minerals, including magnesium, potassium, and phosphorus, as well as beta-glucan, a soluble fiber linked to improving cholesterol and blood glucose levels and boosting heart health. Oats are cheap, too. At about 10 to 15 cents per serving, they're hard to beat in overall value. A common slur on oats, however, is they contain phytates, which makes them unhealthy to eat. Phytate is a compound found in plant foods that hinders absorption of minerals, but using that fact to attack oats is silly. First, Oats aren't uniquely high in phytate. In fact, they have about the same amount as similar grains like barley and rye, and much less than legumes like kidney beans, peanuts, walnuts, almonds, and cashews. Second, although phytates in oats block some mineral absorption, it's not enough to lead to mineral deficiencies or health problems. Moreover, Oatmeal is rich enough in minerals that its phytates only knock it down a rung from exceptional to average in this regard. Ironically, phytates aren't all bad either. Research shows they have positive effects on calcification and kidney stone formation, digestion, blood glucose and lipid levels, as well as anti-cancer effects. I eat oats in the form of oatmeal when I'm lean bulking and particularly like baked oatmeal dishes, but occasionally I'll work them into my meal plan when cutting or maintaining too. You can also replace some of the flour in many baked goods with oats to sneak more into your diet. 
It often boosts the moisture content, increasing chewiness, and gives the food a pleasant malty taste. Cruciferous vegetables. Cruciferous vegetables include cauliflower, cabbage, kale, garden cress, bok choy, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, and similar green leaf vegetables. They're called cruciferous because they're part of the Brassicii family, which was formerly called cruciferi. The primary reason this vegetable family finds itself on many superfood lists is because its members contain three molecules known as isothiocyanates. One, indole-3-carbonyl. Two, sulforaphane. Three, P-E-I-T-C, phenethyl isothiocyanate. All cruciferous vegetables contain these molecules, but amounts and ratios differ. For example, broccoli sprouts have the highest ratio of sulforaphane, whereas mature broccoli and watercress are rich in PEITC. Unlike other antioxidants, isothiocyanates don't combat reactive oxygen species, but stimulate the production of three powerful antioxidant enzymes, glutathione, catalase, and superoxide dismutase. The primary benefit associated with eating cruciferous vegetables is a lower risk of cancer, and colon cancer in particular. Many people also claim they have anti-estrogen effects because of their indole-3-carbonyl content, which turns into a molecule called diindolylmethane (DIM) in the body. While it's true these substances interact with estrogen molecules to make them less potent, the effects are too mild to appreciably impact body composition. Although I don't know of any studies on the optimal amount of cruciferous vegetables to include in our diet, one serving per day is a reasonable recommendation to positively impact our health and well-being. I eat cruciferous veggies every day at dinner, typically in a stir-fry, soup, chili, stew, or casserole, and sometimes have them alongside fish or meat. Steamed broccoli with a squirt of lemon juice is a go-to. Dark chocolate. Yes, I'm telling you to eat chocolate, and I have science on my side. Dark chocolate derives most of its health benefits from molecules called catechins, which are antioxidants also abundant in green and white tea. These molecules have several effects in the body, including improved blood flow, photoprotection, and oxygenation of the brain, in youth at least. Fortunately for your meal plan, too, you only need a little dark chocolate to profit. Research shows just 20 to 50 grams, about 110 to 270 calories, of 70% or higher dark chocolate per day is enough. One thing to be mindful of with dark chocolate, though, is its caffeine content. One square of 60% or higher dark chocolate, about 13 grams, has about 15 milligrams of caffeine, which can interfere with your sleep if you eat too much too close to your bedtime. Black seed. Black seed, also known as nigella sativa, is a plant whose seeds have been used as a spice and medicine for over 2,000 years. The popular supplement black seed oil comes from this plant. It stands out among other cumins and seeds because of its thymoquinone content, which is a molecule associated with many favorable effects in the body, including hepatoprotective, anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, and anti-cancer properties. Black seeds are also tasty, with a flavor similar to black pepper, great for stir-fry recipes, and you don't need to eat much to reap rewards either. One study conducted by scientists at Sam Radalongi University School of Medicine found just three grams of seeds produced mild benefits on many parameters, including an increase in overall mood. And if you want to reach a higher effective dose, double that to about six grams. I like to include three to six grams of black seeds as seasoning in a stir-fry, soup, chili, stew, or casserole. Sometimes, if a recipe calls for black pepper, I'll reduce or remove it if I'm adding black seeds to avoid too much of that flavor. 
That's it for my list of notable foods you should consider incorporating into your diet. If you don't like most or any of the foods covered in this chapter, you don't have to eat any of them to be healthy. But if you want to optimize your physiology, I challenge you to expand your gustatory horizons. It's easy to do, too. First, by eating a food repeatedly, you're more likely to develop a liking for it. Research with children, for example, shows it can take up to 15 exposures to a new food before they adjust to it. Second, you can cultivate a taste for foods you don't like by combining them with ones you enjoy. For instance, if you struggle to eat cruciferous vegetables but love cheese, combine them. Then, as you get used to eating the vegetables that way, you can reduce the amount of cheese until it's no longer needed. Third, recipes are another fantastic tool for learning to enjoy foods. By sprucing up the offending grub with a recipe, you can turn it into a tasty dish you'll be happy to come back to again and again. Fourth, the right perspective helps with adjusting your palate. If you view food primarily as a source of flavor, comfort, and pleasure, it's much harder to eat a lot of what's good for you versus what makes you feel good. If, however, you consider it mainly a supply of nutrition and sustenance, fuel, as some people like to say, you'll develop an inclination toward nutritious foods and an aversion to overindulging in junk calories. In the next and final chapter of this section of the book, we'll discuss the least important aspect of diet, supplementation. Ready to learn why most supplements are still a waste of money and why only a select few are worth including in your regimen? Let's do it. Key takeaways. There are no individual foods that can single-handedly transform your health and well-being. Seafood is a great source of protein as well as various vitamins and minerals such as magnesium, phosphorus, selenium, and vitamins A and D, and it's one of the few foods that provides vital omega-3 fatty acids. If you're not taking an omega-3 supplement, try to have fish high in omega-3s like salmon or mackerel at least once per week. Most studies showing benefits of garlic used aged garlic extract at around 600 to 1200 milligrams, the equivalent of about one to three garlic cloves per day, depending on their size. If you don't want to eat raw garlic, crush, chop, or mince it, and then let it sit at room temperature for at least 10 minutes before cooking it. Blueberries, and all dark blue black berries, are a superior fruit because of their anthocyanin content, which is a powerful antioxidant linked to improved memory, mood, and immunity, as well as less DNA damage, which helps protect against various types of disease and dysfunction. The dose required to produce benefits isn't small, but it's still workable. 60 to 120 grams of fresh blueberries, or about one half to one cup per day, or about 175 grams of frozen blueberries per day. Cranberries have been associated with improved urinary health for years now, and recently, high quality evidence has emerged to support this. Results have been seen with as little as 500 milligrams of cranberry fruit powder or 1.5 grams of dried cranberry, which is the equivalent of around 11 grams of fresh cranberry, a small handful. Oats are an excellent and economical source of several minerals, including magnesium, potassium, and phosphorus, as well as beta-glucan, a soluble fiber linked to improving cholesterol and blood glucose levels and boosting heart health. Cruciferous vegetables contain three molecules known as isothiocyanates, which are associated with a lower risk of cancer and colon cancer in particular. One serving per day of cruciferous vegetables is a reasonable recommendation to positively impact our health and well-being. Dark chocolate derives most of its health benefits from molecules called catechins, which have several effects in the body, including improved blood flow, photoprotection, and oxygenation of the brain, in youth at least. Research shows just 20 to 50 grams, about 110 to 270 calories, of 70% or higher, dark chocolate per day is enough to see benefits. Black seed, also known as nigella sativa, contains thymoquinone, which is a molecule associated with many favorable effects in the body, including hepatoprotective, 
anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, and anti-cancer properties. The effective dose of black seed is three to six grams. Well, that's it for this episode. I hope you found it helpful. And in case you didn't listen to the intro, I understand it's okay. <laughs> this was one of the bonus chapters of the new second edition of my best selling book for experienced weightlifters Beyond Bigger, Leaner, Stronger, which is now live over at www.bblsbook.com. 